Hi everyone, it's Min from Plant Nation and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, this is where I talk about the care and propagation of different plants. I'm a plant enthusiast from Australia. I started about a year ago and I've been collecting, collecting different types of plants and my house is starting to look like a jungle, which is what I love. If you do like this video, I would be so grateful if you could subscribe to the channel and hit the likes button. And today I'm going to be talking about the propagation of begonia maculata. So I have a begonia maculata here. I'm not sure if it's a whitey or hybrid because it's never flowered for me. I bought it about three months ago and uh, there were, it came with some damaged leaves. I didn't cut it off immediately because I wanted to uh, climatize the plant to uh, my place. And this plant sits about three meters from a very large south facing window. And you can see the damaged leaves here and here at the bottom. I'll bring it closer so you can see. So it's basically a sort of mechanical damage. So it must have hit something uh, during the travel while I'm driving it home. As, so I'm going to actually show you how to propagate the plant today. So first of all, uh, you want to choose a mature leaf. You don't want to do any propagation from an immature or young leaf. So you can tell by a wing begonia maculata uh, by the actual coloring of the leaf, if it's a young leaf or it's a more mature leaf. So let me show you. So this one here, can you see it's like a very light green? So this one here is actually a young leaf you don't want to actually use this to propagate because it's not going to have enough energy or unlikely to have enough energy to actually produce roots you want to try something that's more mature leaf like a very dark colored leaf also the good thing about propagating and uh, um, pruning back a begonia maculata is that it makes it more bushy if you like uh, stalky sort of long-legged plants, then you'll leave it alone and it will grow up with not many leaves. I actually prefer my plants looking bushy. So by pruning the actual plant back and then using the leaves uh, to propagate more, the, act the plant will actually produce more leaves and look more bushy. If you like the videos and want to help me out, please subscribe to the channel and hit the likes button. And today I'm going to talk about the propagation of begonia maculata or winged uh, begonias. So this one here that I have is called a begonia maculata. I'm not sure or if it's a whitey or it's a hybrid because it's never flowered for me. So you can tell by a winged begonia with all the dots on its leaves. It's very beautiful. So first of all, uh, I look for before pruning and propagating is that I look for if there's any damaged leaves that I want to make the plant look nicer. The second part is I want to choose mature leaves. So when I talk about mature leaves, I mean that I don't want to use like something like this leaf here. See this one here? It's got a very light green color. So it's a very young leaf. So it's going to be a lot harder for this leaf to actually produce roots because it doesn't have quite a lot of chlorophyll or the green pigment in the leaf to absorb the energy from the sun to produce roots. I, pref I would prefer to use something like this. This is a darker and more mature leaf, so it's more likely to produce roots. Today, I'm actually going to cut these ones here. These ones here, you can see the leaf is very damaged. So the plant came with these damaged leaves and I've left it on for about three months now. So let's start and I'll show you how to uh, propagate a begonia maculata. I got my clippers here. So you want to disinfect the clippers. Don't want to transfer any bacteria or fungus to different plants. I actually use an alcohol swab to actually clean the clippers and then uh, rinse it really well with um, water and then dry it off. Uh, but you can do uh, use other things, whatever disinfectant you have at home, uh, if you want to use dishwasher. But the main part is that 
It needs to be thoroughly rinsed so that there's no chemicals left on the actual shears. Otherwise, this can actually transfer to the plant and damage the plant. This one here, the Begonia maculata, there's nodes on it. And to how to tell a node or growth point is that you see these ridges right here. There's one there and then there's one right here. So this is where basically the plant produces the leaves. And if you cut a leaf off, this is where the plant is more likely going to produce another new leaf. So this one here, this damaged leaf, I'm going to cut off. So it's coming through this node here or this growth point here. And I generally cut about one and a half centimeters or sometimes one centimeters away from that growth point. So let me show you what I do. So all I do is get my clippers that are sterilized and I'll cut it right here. So you want clippers that are very sharp. You don't want ones that are blunt because you don't want to, you want a sharp, clean cut, uh, not one that actually mashes the actual stem. And then with this leaf, I'm just going to pop it into water. So I actually had some cuttings from another plant and I'll show you the rooting of the plant. So I'm just gonna pop this leaf in here. This plant also has another damaged leaf that I want to cut off. So do you see, if I turn around, do you see this one? It also has some damage while um, moving to my place. So I put, popped it, but well, well, really what happened was I popped it in the car and it hit the back seat of my car. So unfortunately these leaves got damaged. So you can see this one here, the growth point is right there. So I want to cut about one centimeter, one half of centimeters away from the growth point. So I'm gonna do that now. So this is another cutting, which I'm going to, just going to pop in water. There's actually different ways to propagate and um, the actual begonia maculata. I tend to like to water propagate compared to soil propagate. I've had more success with water propagation and I find it a lot easier. So with water propagation, once you've done the cutting, just pop it straight into water. Uh, the best water to use is to have filtered water uh, because it doesn't have the chemicals that can harm the actual stem of the leaves. Uh, the other part is choosing the vase or the container that you're going to hold the propagation, the water in. The best one is to use an opaque rather than a clear glass. The reason for that is that with the opaque sort of vases, uh, it's similar it's kind of similar to if the plant was in the ground it's nice and dark so the roots tend to develop faster some people love to put it into clear vases which is great it just takes a little bit longer uh, the other th but the good thing about putting it into a clear vase is that you actually see the roots growing and the roots are very cool to look at so I've had some cuttings that I did a while ago so I'll show you some cuttings that I did So also, I would like to mention is that when propagating um, plants, I tend to like to pop in this little plant here. So I'll show you. This plant here. So this one here is a devil's ivy or golden pothos. I generally, with all my world of propagation, there's one of these cuttings in it. The reason for that is that a golden pothos will actually produce chemicals and release chemicals in the water and make other plants uh, root out a lot faster. So that's always a reason why I usually pop cuttings into the water with the actual pothos in it. Yes, yeah, so with um, once you've done the cutting, just pop it into water in a vase so you want to make sure that the actual stem is underneath the water. So now I'm going to show you how to actually plant the actual cuttings into soil. 
So I have here a terracotta pot. I tend to use terracotta pots for all my begonias. The reason for that is begonias tend to uh, be prone to root rot and fungus disease and it's less likely to occur in a terracotta. A terracotta pot, not only the water drains at the bottom, but on the side, especially good for people like myself who tend to order over water plants. Uh, it's less likely for the plant to actually sit in soggy water and thus less likely to actually end up with root rot. So at the bottom of this pot, I pop into um, horticultural uh, charcoal. This helps with the drainage at the bottom so that it doesn't block up. Some people can use um, broken pieces of terracotta. I tend to use the ch uh, charcoal. I find it a lot better. Also the charcoal, it helps to um, filter the water. So it helps to, uh, well, kill bacteria in the water. So I find that it's a lot better compared to actually putting stone or uh, pieces of terracotta at the bottom. So the soil that I have is uh, a mixture of soil. I tend to use like 60% of premium potting mix. Then I use about 20% of perlite and 20% of um, orchid soil as well, or an orchid mix. So you want the soil actually to hold some moisture but not to the point where it's soggy and it doesn't drain out properly. So that's where the perlite really helps. And is the perlite also aerates the soil, so I find it a lot better. I tend to use a chopstick. So I'll just pop a little hole in the soil and move it around so that the hole is deep enough for the cutting. I'm going to pop this one here. So this one here has a lot of long roots. I'm actually going to put or dig a lot more and just gently just make a bigger hole. You know what, this is not going to work that way, so I'm going to pour this soil out, I'm going to do it a different way. So sometimes if one method doesn't work, you've got to try something else. So there's actually too much soil in this um, actual pot, so I don't want to just shove the cutting in, otherwise it will damage these delicate roots. So I'm just going to pour it out, not all of it, probably about half. I'm just going to make another hole. And just delicately pop it in. Use the soil and pop some soil around the roots. Just very gently. making sure I fill up all the gaps. Now you also want to make sure that there's no gaps in the soil. Uh, if there's gaps in the soil, then the roots won't be able to actually um, draw the water up. So what I tend to do is pack Gently pat down, while well, I gently pat down the soil so it holds and I tend to tap it as well. So I'll just tap it on the table just so that to get rid of those air bubbles. This propagation or this cutting, this one here into the same pot as well. So this time, I think I'm just going to use my hands, just get a little bit dirty and make a hole. So I'm just making a hole. So these are little large pieces of a charcoal. I think they're a bit large. I'm just going to take it away. And I'm just going to delicately pop this cutting in. I 
and then fill it up as well. I'm making a mess at the moment. That's all right, I can clean it up later. Okay, so I just push it down a little bit just to make sure the cutting is firmly in. So there's actually one little root here. That one's, that little root's probably gonna die uh, because it's actually not in the soil. And I actually don't need that little root here. I don't know if you can see this tiny little one here. That was a lot higher on the stem. I don't actually need that root to actually grow because there was a, a lot bigger root system at the very bottom um, growth point and that's all the actual plant needs. So once I popped it in, make sure there's no air bubbles in the soil and then I water it. So I've got my watering can over here. This plant hates having water, especially on the leaves. It's more likely also that if the water is on the leaves, it can end up with um, fungus disease and um, that can actually kill the plant. So I'm just gonna water it now. So I water it thoroughly, make sure that the water is coming out through the drain drainage hole at the bottom. So can you see that? It's actually draining. So the water is draining at the bottom. And you don't want this part to actually sit in the water, the excess water, because this is a terracotta pot. It's actually gonna absorb more water and this plant does not like to sit in water or soggy soil. Soggy soil is just like the recipe for actual root rot or fungus disease. So, any, so drain it all, give it a little shake, and then pour that excess water away. So I've got another saucer at the bottom. So you can see the actual terracotta pot. Can you see it's changing color? That means there's water there. So once the pot is all the dark color, it means the whole pot is actually water and that's enough. Don't want to overwater it, it's good now. So now that it's actually in the soil, I like to climatize these plants. So I tend to have my begonias all near our south facing window. So this one here is quite young. So I would probably put it back more, more backwards. So I, my other plants are probably about three meters away or four meters away. Well, this one here, I probably put it um, behind those other plants so that it doesn't end up with um, sun damage on the leaves. And then that's it. And that's how to um, propagate a begonia. Thank you so much for watching. I, like, I hope you like the video. If you do and want to help me out, please subscribe to the channel and hit the likes button. Well, I see you. Well, I've got to go and clean this all up, but I'll see you on the next video. You have a fantastic day.